Well, the answer is in large barrels. I, I have over here a selection of ways to store water. Each of them has their advantages and disadvantages. So to store water, you need to put it in a food grade container, something that has been made and, and purified and, and able to store water. You would take a container like a 55 gallon drum that I have over here and fill it up with standard household tap water. The question comes, well how much chlorine should I put in it? The answer is none. The water that comes out of your tap is already chlorinated. Right out of the tap will store in, in, in a sealed container for about two years without doing anything to it. The cost of the barrels are expensive. Brand new, they're about $65, depending upon where you get them from, shipping on top of that or others, and there's some places you can get them for less than that. But let's say they're about $65. Even that price is more expensive than going out, let's say, and buying some two-gallon bottles somewhere else, you know, or some of the, maybe you can buy the sparklets or the arrowhead or wherever you choose to buy, you can buy those five-gallon barrels. The barrel on this is expensive, it costs $65. But I have a chart on my website that shows that over a 10 year period, this is the cheapest way to store water. Because the water that you put in that, using the Los Angeles Water District's highest water rate, costs 8 cents to fill that barrel up. As opposed to going somewhere and spending 2 or 3 dollars for a gallon of water. In fact, if you buy water like this, in these bottles, it's like more expensive than gasoline. They're very convenient, but they're very expensive. But they have their place. I don't mean that you shouldn't buy these, I'll cover each one. The large 55 gallon drums, they are really good for storing a lot of water. Is it mobile? No. Not a chance. It weighs over 400 pounds. You are not going to throw that in the trunk of your car and wander off. If you should have to, have to leave your house, you are not going to take a 55 gallon drum and take it with you. It's not going to happen. So if you should have to happen to leave your house, you need to have something that you can transport water with you. And one of the best ways to do that is to go and buy a five-gallon basic water jug. They're about $6 at Walmart. You can pay more, you can pay a little less, but they're about $6 at Walmart. Holds five gallons of water. It's really nice because it's not a 55-gallon drum. You can hide them just about anywhere. I hide them in the back of my closet, the back of my children's closet. In fact, my daughter the other day says, is there water in the Hey, look. My sons got mad. They want to put something away. Well, Dad stuck water in the back of our closet again. So you can hide them just about anywhere. Um, on, on, behind or on the side of where your refrigerator is. Almost every refrigerator has you know, some room stuck on it that you usually put the, the broom somewhere thereabouts. Well, in the very back corner, stack a couple of these up in the back corner because you don't have to get to them every month, every, every, except for about every two years. You can also, and a very good way to do it, is also to use two liter bottles. These are made from food grade plastic that will not disintegrate over time. You take a two liter bottle, take the bottle, take the cap off, rinse it out, rinse it with some bleach, some soapy water, clean it out really well, fill it full of water, cap it off, stick it away, it'll sit like that for at least two years before you have to rotate it. And if you have to leave, this you can carry. This you can carry with a little effort, but it's, you can haul one of those and stick it in the back of your car. These are easy to carry as well. The downside to these and these is when you go to make rotations, the big water barrel, you, water, you rotate the water, you put the water back in, piece of cake. These, you have to hunt all over the house and find out where you put them to, to recycle them. By the way, when you, re put, when you fill these full of water, write the date of the water that you put in there. So it filled on whatever date it is so that you know how old the water is. So when you're, you know, you're, you're going in the back of your pan uh, um, cupboard and trying to get out uh, uh, that pan that you use only once a year when you're cooking uh, the Christmas turkey, and you find one of these in the very back, and you go, oh, I remember that, and you pull it out, and go, oh, wait, I filled this in 1980. I don't think this is good anymore. The other way you can store water is in these kind of containers, buying cases of these, or the, or the one gallon bottles of, that you can buy at the store, the sparklets or those, those kind of things. Those are also handy, carryable, and will store for about two years as well. But each as we go up, from the larger, the, the smaller the container, the more expensive it is, the more expensive way to store the water. Okay? Then when you get to the very bottom one, you get one of these. Now this is not a lot of water. Easily transportable. The upside to this is, first of all, this water is sterile. 
You can use it for cleaning wounds and dressings, as well as drinking it. But this water stores in this foil package for five years, just like this. It has an expiration date on it. So if you happen to throw this in the back of your trunk of your car and forget about it for four years and go, wow, is this any good? It's still good. Where that, this would be bad or will not be drinkable or not really to be drank, drank in about two years. If you see on this one, this one's been in the trunk of my car and the plastic starts to break down on this. Well, the plastic, some of it leaches into the air. Where do you think the rest of the plastic goes? Into the water. Into the water. Yeah. So there are advantages and disadvantages to each of the ways storing of water. That being said, you should probably store a little bit of each. Should you put all of your water in 55 gallon drums? No, because if you have to leave, you can't carry it. Should you put all of your water in these five gallon drums? You certainly could, but think about it. If you're going to use, let's say you're going to store five gallons per person per day, for five days, you're going to have these everywhere. And you're going to start making lawn furniture out of them. So there's that trade-off of good versus bad. There is no um, utopia in water storage. It's always a full trade-off. Now your question was? Can we shower with it? Can you shower with it? Well, that's an excellent question. Any water you can't drink can be used for showering, washing clothes, washing dishes, or more importantly, flushing the body. One of the things I want to talk to you about is um, how much chlorine I have to add. You asked about water going bad. The water that you need to store in here does not require chlorine. It comes out of the tap chlorinated. The only time you need to chlorinate water is if the water is tainted or you're unsure of it. Okay? So let's say you take this five gallon and you stick it behind your refrigerator on the side of your refrigerator like I suggested and you've completely forgot about it. And suddenly one day you wake up and there is no water. And you, so you go hunting through your house for your water and you pull out this jug and there's a little piece of tape on it that says filled in 1980. Is that water good? Probably not for human consumption. How can you make it good? There's basically two ways. Three really, but we're going to cover two and then one is for something completely different. The two ways you can make it safe to drink is you can boil it. Put it on the stove, put it in a pan, bring it to a boil, roll in well for five minutes, will kill anything there is. Any bacteria or anything in there that would hurt you. If you have electricity but, or gas. That's the upside. The downside is it takes a lot of fuel. If you have gas, you have to use the gas. If you have fuel, you have to take that fuel to burn, to burn it, to bring it to the boil. Then after you boil it, it really doesn't taste very good at all. You're going to have to pour it between two pans to try and put more air back into it. The other way of, of, uh, of purifying water that you're not sure of is by adding bleach to it. That's where it comes people say, well, how much bleach should I put in? You put in one tablespoon of bleach for every gallon of water that you need to purify. Okay? Five drops of water for every two liter like this. So about a half a tablespoon. Okay, a teaspoon, sorry, not a tablespoon, a teaspoon. So very little. And then your water will taste a little like chlorine. So how do you get rid of that chlorine taste? How many of you live in the city of Winter Park and got a letter in the mail recently that talked about our, our water supply? Yeah? We just found out, for those of you who don't live in this area, we just found out that in de December, they went and tested the water supply at various places and they found out it had uh, two forms of, of uh, bacteria or... Uh, I forgot, I was going to the letter and forgot it. But the water has been taken. And so they've been really chlorine the water lately. The water tastes terrible coming out of our tap. It doesn't taste very good at all. So it doesn't take, it doesn't take, it, it doesn't take a, a, a catastrophe for something to affect your water supply. So having water around is a, is a, is a, a, a necessity almost because if we, none of us have wells in our backyard.